We have pressed through quite a year, haven't we? Thank you for pressing through it with us here as part of our Lutheran Hour Ministries family. You, you've been there for us and you've helped us in our mission to, to proclaim Jesus, proclaim Jesus, his, his love and his salvation. On January 1st, none of us were expecting that a pandemic would, would come and isolate us from our families, from our loved ones, from our congregations. No one was expecting that a pandemic would wreak havoc on communities around the world, but it did. And now, as we look toward 2021, by God's grace, we will begin to rebuild. So I wanna share with you some, some ministry building projects that that Lutheran Hour Ministries has planned for 2021. And I also want you to know about another opportunity, how several individuals have already come forward to fund a matching grant that will carry your next gift twice as far. All this means is, is that whatever you decide to give now, this grant can, can double its impact. And I hope that you will consider adding your contribution to this momentum that the Lord has already given us. Now this season of rebuilding that we are entering, it reminds me of an Old Testament man, Nehemiah. Nehemiah, if you remember, he was one of the people of Israel in exile under the Persian Empire. And Nehemiah worked for the king, he served the Persian king Artaxerxes. He was the, the cupbearer to the king, which apparently put him in a position to ask a favor of the king. Now, Nehemiah needed a favor because he had heard the report about the condition of Jerusalem, his beloved city. The, the messengers came and told him that the people, the survivors of the exile in Jerusalem, they were in great trouble and shame. The city wall was broken down, the gates were destroyed. Now in ancient times, a city's wall was its first line of defense. The, the wall surrounded the perimeter of the city and, and the gates were closed at night to protect the people on the inside and then a, a watchman would ascend to the top of the wall and serve as a lookout and he could spot an enemy army coming from miles away. But without walls, the, the city in ancient times was vulnerable to attack and easily exploited. And this was Jerusalem's predicament. The people of Jerusalem were exposed to attack and the house of God, the temple of God was vulnerable to plunder. And, and Nehemiah heard about this and it broke his heart and so he needed a favor. And he sought the favor of the Lord and he sought the blessing of the king. And with the favor of the Lord and the blessing of the king and the contributions of the people, he knew that they could begin this building project. And this building project, once completed, would serve as a sign, a sign to the people that their God had not abandoned them. A lot of people around the world and in our own country as they look towards 2021, they are climbing out of such a situation. You know what this situation is like when you lose something dear to you, something that's integral to your life is taken away. It can leave you, it can leave you devastated and, and wondering, what do I do next? How do I, how do I rebuild my life? And a lot of people are asking that question. Families have faced disease and death. Communities have been struck by social unrest and economic crisis. Individuals have felt alone and helpless. And we as believers, as followers of Jesus, we have the unique responsibility to let the light of Jesus shine through us. And Lutheran Hour Ministries, God has strategically positioned Lutheran Hour Ministries, and you're a part of this as, as a member of the Lutheran Hour Ministries family. He has positioned us to offer hope during this year of rebuilding. 
And so I want to tell you about four ministry projects, four priorities that we believe God has set before Lutheran Hour Ministries in 2021. The first project, first priority, is our cornerstone broadcast, the Lutheran Hour. Now, you know, God has a long history of positioning the Lutheran Hour as a national voice of encouragement during times of crisis. And this year, as many churches had to temporarily close their doors and some couldn't offer services online, more and more people turned to the Lutheran Hour for worship and encouragement. Approximately one million people listen each week on 1,800 radio stations throughout North America. People also listen on other national platforms such as Sirius XM Radio, the Bot Radio Network, other on-demand platforms, and through our website, lhm.org. Along with the Lutheran Hour, this year we launched a new podcast, a podcast called Speaking of Jesus. Speaking of Jesus brings people together from different walks of life to converse and to share the good news that they hear in the Bible passage that was featured on the Lutheran Hour that week. So that's our first priority. And our second priority, as communities begin to rebuild and Christians have a prime opportunity to step in and help, our second opportunity, our second priority is the launch of the Hopeful Neighborhood Project. The Hopeful Neighborhood Project is based on research done in partnership with the Barna Group, and it connects ministry and volunteers on a local and on a national level. The Hopeful Neighborhood Project will provide customizable resources that will help identify a community's characteristics and, and needs, and then empower volunteers and households to seize opportunities to meet some of those needs and to work together for a common good. And because we believe that Jesus Christ lives in us, his people, when Christians work together with others in these projects and they serve as a witness to their Lord, people will get to know Jesus who don't know him. And so we pray that as as we work in this way and we share God's word, that the kingdom of God will come among us and our neighborhoods will be transformed. In these neighborhoods, there are young people, people in their 20s, 30s, and 40s, who are establishing a career and raising young families. Sadly, a lot of these young people don't find it as important to practice the Christian faith. They have a lot of skepticism about Christianity. And this brings us to our third priority. We are on a mission to reach them through Thread and Vivenciar. These are online hubs that we are continuing to build. These hubs provide videos and discussion platforms and other social media features to, to meet people, to respond to skepticism about Christianity. By meeting people where they spend a lot of their time online, we can, we can speak of things like health and faith, social concerns. We can, we can answer their questions. We have volunteers trained to answer their questions and ease their concerns, engage them in conversations, and ultimately lead them to Jesus. Now, that's what Thread does in North America in the English language. Vivenciar does much of the same in Latin America in Spanish and Portuguese. And you need to know that, that in the last several months, the number of people engaging with us in these platforms has surged. And Vivenciar is just one vehicle through which we proclaim the good news of Jesus to people in more than 50 different countries. People, in some cases, who have no other opportunity to hear of him. So think of it. Someone hears about Jesus, who he is, and what he promises them for the first time because you cared enough through this ministry to tell them about him. Lutheran Our Ministries doesn't 
send missionaries from the United States overseas. Instead, we raise up individuals to serve in the countries where they are from. This has some advantages. First, they're cultural insiders, uh, and so they know the culture. And second, this gives them instant credibility. And third, because they're citizens of that country, when a tragedy or disaster strikes, they don't exit the country. And in the coming years, we want to expand on this model. And this is our, our fourth priority, expanded global gospel impact. And here's how. In several countries around the world, they're, they're often united by a shared language or shared customs within a region. And so by, by creating resources designed for that region, we can multiply the places where we proclaim the gospel. And we can do this in a cost-effective way. And we can reach into countries that are close to other Christian organizations. So in the next five years, this is, this is our plan to, to take what we've learned through broadcasting in, in North Africa and the Middle East and, and use those lessons to expand our regional footprint. For many people around the world, 2021 is going to be a year of rebuilding. And Lutheran Hour Ministries, by God's grace, is strategically positioned to be a beacon of hope. We are positioned to be a beacon of hope during this time. These four projects that I mentioned, because of their, their national and global scale and with some startup cost involved, together they will carry a cumulative cost of $3.5 million. $3.5 million, it sounds daunting. But together, when the whole ministry family gets involved, it's attainable. Each one of us matters. I also want you to remember that that Lutheran Hour Ministries funding doesn't come from the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, or another Christian denomination. We operate on your behalf. And don't forget that matching grant that I mentioned earlier that can carry the gift that you give today twice as far. So I hope that you will consider a generous contribution to this work that the Lord has given us. We do not take you for granted as a member of the Lutheran Hour Ministries family, and I personally thank you. I thank you for your prayers and for your partnership in the gospel. May the Lord bless this work for the sake of Jesus. Amen. Amen.